Welcome back, YouTubers, to my channel. I've been every day now for an SB. If you're following me right now and you're new to my channel, I'm SB. I'm all about creating mental health and awareness versus sharing my life stories with the Spitches Syndrome and every other condition that lies in the territory with it, along with tips and advice to help you guys manage the best way you can in these tips and advice. Just to be in mind, though, also with some of the tips and advice in mind, I just mean hanging it based on my life experiences as well as just my training that I thought would be of value and use to you guys so if some of it doesn't deem appropriate or fit for you guys you know don't forget just try some other steps or stages of through these tips and advice that I give out to you and if it still doesn't you know work within a few attempts you know seek professional help and seek an opinion so in all further ado also I do basically some video messages hope messages based on just your everyday personal struggles regardless of what it may be here's an example relationship breakdowns versus just you know communication problem you know or you're just a kind of individual that's giving up so easily and you just want to end life or what have you but i don't wish for you guys to condone any self-harm or anything of that nature i just hope that you can seek the professional help you need so in further ado guys as i said before basically i'm taking a break from my beauty from ashes kind of playlistings of those everyday personal video messages but they'll be back on deck soon but in the meantime i'm just trying to do some tidy up of some mental health and awareness parts before next year that i want to hopefully cover basically of some other topics on the ones i'm going to be talking about in the mental health series so bear with me on this so this one's all about you know anxiety panic attacks and all that just to hopefully tidy up the really scenes i know there will be a few more you know everyday topics and also just to be in mind i humbly apologize if some of these tips and advice i give out to you have already been shared by me basically but you know and all saying that you know sometimes it's good just to hit it up hit it on the repeat button actually know what we need to know basically on the need to know basis so that we can actually look out for the signs and symptoms for ourselves or even someone that we love that is going through any of these personal struggles be it anxiety panic attacks and all the like so enough for the dope before i begin this also is that I am no medical doctor, just to put a disclaimer out here, I'm just a normal everyday girl that's just sharing my life stories, it's species of syndrome and the like. So if you see any warning signs and symptoms based on these everyday topics that are close to my heart of the mental health and awareness versus anything else, seek professional help and seek an opinion for yourself and for that loved one. So that, so further ado, I'm going to be talking about how to stop panic attacks. This one will be broken down into two parts. So the first part will be covered as part one getting immediate relief and part two preventing future attacks so let's begin this before we run out of time as you know panic attacks can be really scary and it comes on really sudden and it is a frightening experience for most of us that will endure this sometime in our lives sometimes when it comes down to it with this panic attack when it's really sudden and that when it's really frightening we tend to feel like we're having a heart attack dying or losing control of everything around us Okay, many adults do, however, experience only one or two attacks in a lifetime, however, but others may have recurrent attacks throughout their life, which may be an indication of an underlying condition called panic disorder. A panic attack is an abrupt onset of intense fear for no apparent reason, accompanied by very real physical changes around us, such as rapid and um, pounding heart rate, you know, sweating, rapid breathing, chest restrictions, panting, the like. <coughs> So today I'm going to share with you in part one and part two the steps on how you can of the steps that can be taken to stop a panic attack and how to prevent further future attacks from happening. So please follow along with me. So part one, getting immediate or relief. Number one is recognize the physical symptoms. During a panic attack, your body will go into that natural flight or fright response, as I said before, especially with those chemical imbalances in our brain as well as the chemical hormones of the yeah, and drill Allen that does this kind of fight and flight response basically just as if you were in a real terrifying and dangerous situation but as you know there's not only no dangerous situation that is a cure and what's actually inside of you but the symptoms that are commonly experienced during a panic attack may include of the following number one chest pain or discomfort in your chest number two dizziness or you feeling faint number three fear of dying number four fear of losing control or impending doom number five feeling of you're, you're choking number six feeling of detachment number seven feeling of the unreality around you number eight feeling of unreality or should i say detachment i should say Number nine is nausea or upset stomach. 
number 10, numbness or tingling in the hands, feet or face, number 11, palpations, fast heart rate or the pounding heart, just racing around ID mile a minute, number 12 is sweating, chills or hot flashes, number 13 is trembling or shaking. Number two, controlling the breathing. Most panic attacks, as we know, basically can cause rapid and shallow breathing, which fuels the attack. It feeds it to a point that we're of no return, however. And then it will cause the symptoms that we have as listed above to linger on. By controlling our breathing, however, we can re help return the heart to a normal standard heart rate versus hopefully our blood pressure will become lower as well as hopefully slowing the sweating down and re-establish a feeling of being in control of it all. As I shared before, basically as an advice here, one method to slow your breathing is to take a deep breath and hold it for as long as you can and count to 10 if need be, you know, breathing in and out. This balance levels of oxygen and carbon dioxide and reduces the feeling that cannot be breathed in and out. Okay, and number two of this is after holding your breathing, begin deep diaphragmatic breathing. Breathe in slowly, and deeply, then exhale more slowly. To practice diaphragmatic breathing, try sitting in a chair, basically as I'm sitting, with one hand on your chest and the other below the rib cage. Start comfortably with bent knees and relaxed shoulders and necks. The next step on this is next breathe in slowly, in through your nose, and let your stomach expand, keeping your upper chest as still as possible. Then slowly exhale. Tightening your stomach muscles and you keep your upper chest still. The hand on your stomach here should move out more as you inhale, then back in as you exhale with the hand on the upper chest remaining as still as possible. If that doesn't work, another method you could use is the 5 to 5 method. What I mean here is inhale with your diaphragm for 5 seconds, hold your breath for 2 seconds, and then exhale for 5 more seconds. Repeat this 5 times and you should be able to get a feel and a rhythm in that. If all the else fails, maybe you could use a paper bag to breathe into, which, which is not usually routinely recommended anymore, but I still do it anyway. It may not be as beneficial as believed in the past, but may even be detrimental. Number three, taking prescription medication. One of the most effective ways to stop a panic attack is by taking oral agents classed as anti-anxiety medications. Usually it's the benzodiazepines that I've mentioned in, in my previous videos. The common drugs used to treat panic attacks that are classed as benzodiazepines include the following Alprazolam, Lorazepam, and Dizepam. These agents have fairly rapid onset and can help to relieve the symptoms within 10 to 30 minutes. Another advice here other agents that are prescribed that falls into the group of benzodiazepine starts to work a little bit slower but will stay longer. In your bloodstream. The examples of these chemical agents are or may include of the flowing clonazepam, chlorodiazepine, and oxazepam. And the last part of the advice there, these agents are often prescribed in those doses to take regularly until the panic tanks becomes more manageable by using other forms of medication, such as selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors or participating in some behavioral therapy classes. Number four, try to continue an activity that you were doing before the attack strike as much as possible and maybe, you know, easier said than done. Carry on normally and continue with your current activity and daily routine to prevent the attack from consuming you. Basically, as I mean here, is to carry on by just finding a, finding a way to distract you away from that panic attack stage. Advice here is continue talking, moving, and keeping your thoughts focused. By doing so, you are sending messages to your brain in that panic that if there is no danger, no cause of alarm, and no reason to be in that flight or fright state in the first place. Number five, avoid running away. If you have a panic attack at a specific time or place, however, bear in mind that you know this is going to do more damage than good. Maybe it's the grocery store, here's an example, then you want to run away and leave the store as quickly as possible. Advice here is by staying where you are and taking control of the symptoms, you're taking steps to train your brain and recognizing the absence of the real danger in the grocery store. Another advice here, if you run away also, your brain begins to associate that place where you run out away and maybe all your grocery stores with danger and may create feelings of panic each time you do enter the grocery store. 
Number six, focus on other things. With the help of a therapist, you can help learn ways to naturally focus on your thoughts and take control of your panic or whatever else it may be that's causing you to panic in the first place. Advice here, yeah, examples may include just drinking something, eat a little more cold, taking a short walk, singing along to your favorite song, talking with a friend, or just watching TV. Another advice here, number two, is there are additional things to try, to try in order to focus on something rather than the panic may include your stretching exercises, doing a puzzle, changing the air temperature, rolling down the window if you are in a car, going outside for some fresh air, or reading something that is interesting to you. Number seven, distinguish between a stressful experience and a panic attack. While both types of these experiences may be similar in its form, and that physical reactions may occur, such as elevated blood pressure, sweating, and increased heart rate, they are distinctly different events. Advice here, with your stressful experiences, however, this can happen to everyone at one time or another, though. The body's natural fight or flight instinct may be activated during a stressful or anxious situation, just as it would with a during your panic attack. But there's always a trigger even an experience that is directly tied to this reaction. On the other hand, however, panic attacks are not tied to an event, are unpredictable, and the severity of an attack can be extreme to very terrifying. Number eight, implement some relaxation techniques. Take steps to calm down by using established methods of relaxation to take control and be in control of this for this exaggerated stressful or anxious experience that you're facing. Advice here is if you suffer from panic attacks or panic disorders, working with a combat behavioral therapist will help you learn relaxation strategies to take control of the panic when it starts. Number nine, use your senses to tackle the attack. Whether you experience a panic attack, an anxiety attack, or even just find yourself in a stressful situation, try focusing your, on your senses even for just a few moments at a time. You can slow down the unwanted physical symptoms that are happening in and around you. As well as here, maybe you could use your eyesight to notice pleasant things in your immediate surroundings. If you're in a safe place, try closing your eyes and visualize your favorite flower, maybe your favorite place, your favorite painting, favorite beach, or something that makes you feel more relaxed. Another advice here is number two, is stop and listen to what is around you. Try to find some music in the distance, hear the birds, the wind or the rain, or even the hum of the traffic on a nearby highway or roadside. Try to find something new that you can hear other than the sounds of your heart beating and sounds that are part of that stressful event that you're about to um, uh, you know, face on. So, <clears throat> number three, continue to follow these senses by intensifying the smell around you. Perhaps you are inside and someone is cooking. Or even if you're outside, you can smell the rain in the air or you can smell some flowers basically beside you. Again, focus on the sense of touch. You may not realise it, but you are always touching something. If you are seated, focus on the way how the chair feels. Or even notice if the, ta if the table your arm is resting on is hot, warm, cold, or if you can feel the breeze on your face. Last but not least, just to be in mind of these bits. By taking these few moments to review what your senses are experiencing, you have redirected the focus away from the panic, anxiety, or stress. This will clearly not resolve the cause of the panic, anxiety, or stress, however, but concentrating on the senses, however, is useful in addressing the unwanted physical reaction you're experiencing at that given moment of time. Well, this basically ends the first part of how to deal with the panic attack. Give me a like for thumbs up for support and engagement. Comment below if I'm going to add anything or feel free to open the floor for discussion about how you manage about your panic attacks and that so that everyone else can learn from each other. Feel free to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so. Feel free to follow on my social medias, Facebook and Twitter, as beyond so feel free to share these videos around to your family and friends. Do what you love, love what you do. Until next time, thanks for support. Thanks for watching. ASP signing out.